So tonight we come to the scientific foreknowledge of the Bible. <clears throat> There's a lot of things that we take for granted that we just, oh, that's obvious. Well, no, the simple fact is, for a long time, a lot of stuff was not obvious to anybody. And I would say that there are still scientific truths contained in the Bible that, frankly, even with all of our technology, we're still too stupid to even know what God meant. Um, because when you get to some of these, you're going to go, you know, how could anybody miss that? But some of them, uh, keep in mind, Moses wrote in the year 1500, okay, B.C., so that's 3,500 years ago. So when we start to see some of this, keep in mind, anything from Genesis to Deuteronomy, the book of Job, that's 3,500 years old. Anything from the Psalms or Proverbs or Ecclesiastes, all that stuff is 3,000 years ago. Okay? Even some of the stuff that Jesus said, that is about how many years ago? Two thousand. Two thousand. All right. So, so I want you to understand when we talk about when some of this stuff was discovered, that when someone says, I don't understand why God says blank, just hush up and do what he said. <laughs> you don't have to understand it for it to work if you'll just do what he told you to do. And this is one of those where that's just painfully true. All right? So the first one we come to is blood is essential to life. So go on ahead and turn over to Leviticus 17. Leviticus 17. All right. And you might recognize that individual. All right. Now, if I give someone to read Leviticus 17, 11 through 14. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonements for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Therefore, I said to the children of Israel, no one among you shall eat blood, nor shall any stranger who dwells among you eat blood. Whatever man of the children of Israel or of the strangers who dwell among you, who hunts and catches any animal or bird that may be eaten, he shall pour out its blood and cover it with dust, for it is the life of all flesh. Its blood sustains its life. Therefore, I said to the children of Israel, you shall not eat the blood of any flesh, for the life of all flesh is in its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off. All right, so a lot of different things. And, and, and the third one down there, uh, anybody ever had a fresh cup of deer blood? No, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Didn't you know the first deer you ever killed, you take and you cut its throat, you get your canteen cup, and you drink some of it? Some of the movies. No, in real life. Disgusting. <laughs> but there are plenty of people still do that even in America today. Okay. Is there all kinds of stuff that you don't need to drink that's in the blood of things that you kill? All right. Um, you know, for those who have hunted animals, especially larger game, if you can't get the shot clean and drop them basically right on the spot, don't take the shot. Because at the best, the only thing that meat is good for is turning into sausage. And as they run and as they release the chemicals into their blood off of that adrenaline hit, it will ruin the meat. It will just flat ruin. So, you know, so this this thing about the blood, how many diseases are bloodborne pathogens? Yeah. That's why we have a whole category of medicine devoted to bloodborne pathogens. Yeah. You know, all those zombie movies. Cool. All right. Zombie movies next to slasher films 
You can identify the idiot. The idiot goes into the house by themselves. All right? The idiot, the person, <coughs> I, I don't know where everybody got white handkerchiefs in every zombie movie. And they look down, and there's blood, the person gets down there. Oh, wow. No! If you see someone coughing blood, you get out of the area until you can protect yourself from airborne particulates. Hello? Hello? So this blood thing. How long ago did God tell you? Don't play games with the blood. 3,500 years ago. How long ago did the Lord tell you? If you bleed out an animal. Right? He says cover it with dirt. Cover it with dust. Why? Why? Are there insects that will get it as it rots, as it gets more contagious? And then they carry it and they land on you and they bite you. And now you've got disease. <laughs> Mm, seems like God is pretty smart yet again. <laughs> now, who knows the real reason George Washington died? Raise your hand if you know the real reason. Sister Ann, what was the real reason? Bloodletting. Bloodletting. Bloodletting, a fine, fine tradition. You ever wonder why your hairstylist has to have a license from the State Board of Health? Here's why. Some of y'all remember back in the day when they used to have real marble holes. They were also the They were all supposed to be blue and red. After a while, they just went to red or they just went to blue. The reason blue, if it was a vein as it ran down and trickled the arm and made that loop, or if it was arterial as it ran down and made that loop, hence the red and the, uh, the red and the blue. You used to go to your friendly barber for a haircut and a little bit of bloodletting. Okay. Do what? Oh yeah, don't forget your dental work at your friendly dentist also. Yes. You know, who might also be your neighborhood solo. So, you know, now, point of truth, did most of those guys have Bibles and at least read the New Testament back in the 1700s? Probably. Yes. And they read some of the moral principles. Why they didn't get the doctors to read Leviticus on this <clears throat> is there such a thing as bad blood? Yes. How long has it been that we've had transfusion to be able to clean it out and filter it out? Not very long. Okay? As you transfuse someone, what do you do at the same time you're taking stuff out? Putting stuff in. Putting stuff in. You know? And so the Lord said all these things 3,500 years ago. But as recently as 200. 30 years ago, and there's still plenty of countries in the world that practice bloodletting or cupping as a medical practice to let some of the bad blood out so your body will make some fresh new blood. If you want to do that, go donate a pint and, and, and do that, okay? One pint low ain't going to hurt you. One pint low ain't going to hurt you. But I've had some good barbers. I wouldn't trust any of them to, to do bloodletting. Okay. Second one, male and female reproduction. All right. You need both sides of this equation. Go back over to Genesis 3. In verse 15, someone read that. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. All right, a woman has a principle of life that is part of the equation. Right. In our culture, we call that 
the oval. All right. Also known as the A. Now Genesis 22:18. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. All right. In your seed. Now, the word for seed in the New Testament is the word sperma. Is what it is. <clears throat> A lot of people, even into the 1800s, thought that any place a man put his seed that was sufficient to keep it his temperature could spawn a child. That a woman was just the most convenient and pleasant place to put seed. When was that? Again to the 1800s. You what? Dumb. Yeah. Dumb. <clears throat> but the principle of virgin birth. And that God would activate the feminine principle to bring forth life in Genesis 3.15 to 22.18. And then just the whole story of Sarah and Abraham. That God kept Sarah's integrity in spite of Abraham's decisions for her and Abraham together to bring forth a child of promise. So the concept was there. We already talked about animal blood being forbidden. Human waste. Human waste. Deuteronomy. <clears throat> now, a couple people will say that Moses just took the wisdom of Egyptian medicine and applied it, and that's what he wrote from the Bible. Exodus will tell you, Hebrews will tell you, that Moses was trained in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. So if someone will read me Deuteronomy 23, 12 through 14. Also, you shall have a place outside the camp where you may go out, and you shall have an implement among your equipment, and when you sit down outside, you shall dig it with it and turn and cover your refuse. For the Lord your God walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and to give your enemies over you. Therefore, your camp shall be holy, that he may see no unclean thing among you and turn away from you. All right. You ever wonder why the children of Israel kept having to move so often? You can only dig so many holes to go to the toilet. He kept moving them around the desert for no other reason than they have a fresh place to dig. <laughs> All right? Number one. Number two, the Black Plague. And even a lot of places in Europe until about 40, 50 years ago would what? Throw their bedpan waste into the gutter on the street. And if there's no rain this week, well, you know, just step over it. When people say Europeans are barbarians and disgusting, they're not wrong. <laughs> the French still haven't mastered the art of painting. Okay? So God says this that long ago. Who knows one of the best Egyptian treatments for a cut on your forearm? Honey. No. <laughs> Honey mixed with feces. Oh, I left that part out. Got a toothache? <laughs> Put some feces on it. Oh, Got something you? else? Mix it with this and put it with feces and then put it on you. I counted no fewer than 10 major Egyptian remedies that feces was the number one agreement. Uh, number one ingredient. Some of them, it was cows. Some of it, it was something else. One of them was a pregnant woman's feces mixed with her urine. That's the road forward to health and wellness. What do we have? In a hepatitis? Has anybody heard of that? Yes. God bless the Hindus. We use the holy river Ganges 
for all of our waste products, then we'll go swim in it because that makes us holy. Yet we won't understand why we get cholera and, and, and. The Lord said, dig a hole, cover it up. This one thing alone, plumbing and sewage or plumbing with septic, has done more to overall improve general health and longevity than any other thing in society ever in world history. You say, what about clean water? Your water is instantly cleaner if human waste isn't washing down into all your drinking supplies every time it rains. You know? So, so you know, think about that. And what else did he say? He says, go outside. He doesn't say dig the hole in your can. Go outside the can. So that means you got to plan ahead. Yeah. You know? Do you understand what a luxury it is to have toilets inside the building that are climate controlled? Yes. You know? So, and, and you're sitting there saying, well, this is obvious. It wasn't obvious. It wasn't obvious. In Egypt, they collected this stuff for medicine to put on things. I mean, it's not like the old thing, you know, chew some tobacco and slap it on. No, tobacco had some medicinal quality. Okay? It has more medicinal quality topically than it does chewing inside your mouth, but, you know. But that, you know. What else do we have? The earth is round. The earth is round. Okay? Uh, Sally, Isaiah 40, 22. Kevin, Proverbs 18, 27. <laughs> Brother Tom. Yeah, I, know I should have knocked on my podium now. <laughs> Luke 17, 34, Brother Tom, if you don't mind. are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. Okay. It is he who sits above the circle. circle. The circle of the earth. Proverbs 8.27 when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he drew the circle on the face of the deep. When he drew the circle, or compass it, King James says. Okay? Then Brother Tom. I tell you, when, I tell you, in that night, there will be two men in one bed. The one will be taken and the other will be left. Go ahead and catch 35 and 36, brother. Two women will be grinding together. The one will be taken and the other left. Two men will be in the field. The one will be taken and the other left. All right. So in that night, so he says when he returns, there's going to be people sleeping. And when he returns, what? There's going to be people working. Now, until we had tractors with big lights on, generally did you work in the field when it was dark? No. No. Until we had factories with lights in them, generally did you grind at the meal when it was dark? 
So Jesus says back then, part of it is going to be at nighttime, and the other part of it is going to be daytime. When I come back, there will be daytime and nighttime both spread out on the earth. Now, on Monday, uh, Columbus Day, did Columbus discover America? No. Yes, he did. Everybody else who went back, they didn't broadcast it. They didn't do a PR campaign and say, we found a continent filled with gold. Let's take it. So he discovered it in that sense. Now, was it already here? Yes. Yeah, but he went back. He made it popular. What nationality was Columbus? Italian. What? You were in my class Monday. <laughs> he was Italian. You know how many people think he was Spanish? Well, he most people do. He still was Spanish. <laughs> King Ferdinand, Queen Isabella. They financed the trip because his own regents in Italy wouldn't. Yeah. You're going to fall off. You're an idiot. There's nothing there. You'll never find a path. So if you just take what Jesus said, that part of it's dark and part of it's light, you could have figured that out with cantaloupe or whatever round vegetable they had in Europe back then. True or false, the Italians have always used tomatoes in their cooking. Yes, that's a false. Tomatoes were a new world thing that they took back. Yes. All right. So there was no such thing as marinara sauce with your mozzarella years ago. All right. It's crazy. You know, so all this stuff, whatever round fruit they had in Europe, they could have shined the light and realized, oh, part of it is lit up and the other part is dark. They could have taken where the scripture says, he sits on a circle, he looks down on a circle. They could have known. Now, that's all right. Some would say, but brother, what about the fact that the scripture says to the four corners of the earth? Okay. What are the cardinal directions? East, west, north, south, east, west. When you connect north, south, east, and west, what do you have? Four corners. Four corners. principles of a compass and a compass has had 360 degrees in it for a long time a compass went all the way around even back then the very magnetic function of a compass should have demonstrated the principle that this thing was probably around because as you kept going whatever direction it was going and following an arcing pattern you say, how can they couldn't figure it out? I don't know. Maybe it's because they left too much human waste in their streets. I don't know. <laughs> Messed with how they thought. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, how come we live in a time where people can't figure out? If fossil fuels are bad, how does making hundreds of millions of cars with electric batteries that you're going to have to dispose of at some point make it a better plan? Uh, the last time I checked, acid and plastic in a landfill, it's bad mix. Bad mix. It's better than fossil fuel emissions. I mean, what planet are you people on? I don't know. Yeah, we're on the same planet, but. This other one, and, and you say, I, I, yeah, I have two mixed because there were too many different beliefs about the shape of the earth. Way too many. Uh, Job 26, 7. He stretches out the north over empty space. He hangs the earth on nothing. Stretches out the north over the empty space. He hangs the earth on nothing. 
scripture that I'll come back to at some other point where it says that out of a drop of water he weighed and measured out the balance of the oceans out of a speck of dust he put into balance the entirety of the universe he set the entire thing up that the rotations and the revolutions and even the stuff that turns sideways from everything else all holds in a perfect balance throughout the entire universe. It beats saying that it's on the back of a turtle or that elephants carry it or that Atlas just happens to have it on his shoulders because it begs the question, what was Atlas standing on? What's the turtle? What's underneath the turtle? Well, there's another turtle. How many turtles underneath the turtle? What? Turtle. The turtle and the elephant. Turtles, that's Hinduism. Okay. Atlas is the Greeks and the Romans. You know? And so, so, you know, but Job, so 3,500 years ago, Moses, writing the book of Job, puts down that the earth is suspended from nothing. No, nobody thought anything even close to that. Um, Genesis 10. Let's go to Genesis 10. This one, when I was double checking it, it astounded me that uh, official acknowledgement of continental drift is only about 50 years old. It's only about, it wasn't until 1968 that scientists genuinely entertained it, and it was in the early, it was 1970, 71, before it was finally accepted that the continents are in motion. Prior to that, they taught continental autonomy. Every continent is where it's always been, and it's never been any place else. That when they finally acknowledged continental drift, and they calculated, they came to the point that scripture uh, had said 3,500 years ago. All right. 1025, not 1035. 1025. Uh, someone read that. The names are Eber and Peleg and Jockton. All right. So who are we going to read? And one day Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. All right. Now some people say, well, you know, brother, that's only talking about God confusing the languages and separating the world uh, in various language groups. Uh huh. But the, this isn't. It, this isn't the only place this occurs. It also occurs. Psalms, but the word there means in his day the earth was broken up. It's another way you can translate the Hebrew in that in, in those in those days the earth was broken up. <clears throat> and you know, and then we 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 won't have time to go into a lot of archaeological Christian evidences this quarter. There was an ice age after the flood. The flood came over the earth so quick, the water breaking up out of the fountains of the deep so fast, literally shifted the axis of the earth. And it shifted it and dropped the temperature so fast that, and I mean, you can, you can look this one up with ease. There were tens of thousands of acres in Siberia that in the 1800s when they unearthed the woolly mammoths in Siberia, they were flash frozen so quick, the water crystals did not break inside the cells. None of the cells were broken. They harvested them frozen, took them back to England, and had dinners where they ate woolly mammoths. Bird's Eye set up to do a study of it 
to try and perfect flash freezing vegetables mm -hmm. so that it wouldn't break the cellular wall so that you could flash freeze a vegetable and maintain the same integrity as if it just came out of the field. That's how fast the temperature shifted over the poles. Boom. Okay? You say, what does that have to do? If you will study history of civilization, almost all of your pyramids and almost all of civilization developed between the 23rd parallel north and the 23rd parallel south also known as the Tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, because until about 4,000, 5,000 years ago, anything above about the 30th parallel, 30th to 32nd parallel, was covered in a sheet of ice stick. And so God broke those apart, and that's why. The Great Pyramid of Egypt, the Great Pyramid of the Mayans, all the different, like Angkor Wat and all that, they all fall within the same area because that was the only place people could go. Everything was on one continent and God broke it all apart and that's where those people were stuck. And he did not let them come back together. You know? And so, uh, Hebrew, the Hebrew there, you know, he, it was broken up. It was broken up. Is that anything like an earthquake? Mm-hmm. And that's why we have the fault line earthquakes now. Once he cracked it and set it in motion, it's still moving. It's still moving. And does that have anything to do with what we call the continental divide on this, on this continent? No. <clears throat> and Sam and I were traveling out west. We went to a place that said we were crossing the continental divide. I don't know what that meant. Your, your continental divide west of the Mississippi is the bulk of the entire North American landmass and everything on the east side ends up in the Gulf of Mexico everything on the west side ends up in the Gulf of California um, and that line on that mountain ridge is the break point for the entire continent um, but I'm going to say that there's probably plates that they don't know about because as you continue north on the continental divide, what do you end up in? Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. And Yellowstone, Yellowstone is a super volcano just waiting <laughs> to blow up uh, with all the thermal vents and everything else. So, and, and when you look at the, the steepness of the Rockies uh, and all that, whatever, whatever brought them together, you know, that they're one of they're like the third highest set of mountains in the world. Uh, your Himalayan is your largest because you've got the Asian and, and the, the other part of the, what, you know, I, I call it the Russian plate. I don't remember what the correct name for it is, but west of the Urals, all that pushed up with the Indian plate. And that's, you've got like four major plates that pushed up to make the Himalayas. So, you know, most of your major mountain ranges is two massive plates that have pushed up anywhere between 10,000 and 29,000 feet. And so, yeah, continental divide is part of that. Um, you know, because out in California with your San Andreas Fault and that line on the Cascades, they all, those two come together in Alaska and Canada and they break apart like a wishbone. And so in between those two is a separate plate. But it's a stable plate, comparatively speaking. So, uh, lightning is naturally produced. Uh, Jeremiah 10. You know, it, it's a rare thing here, what, if you hear thunder and it doesn't rain. You know, it's a freaky day when it thunders for like eight hours and not a single drop falls. Jeremiah 10, verse 13. When he utters his voice, there's a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain, he brings the wind out of his treasuries. All right. 
No, this still attributes the creation of these things to God. Okay, he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain, and he brings the wind out of his treasuries. And, and I would still argue this one's kind of valid. Um, where does wind start? Where does wind end? You say, well, brother, we know that there are different, yeah, I know. We know there's different air currents. What makes the jet stream continue to be a jet stream? No. Isn't it a fascinating thing, all the different air currents that are no different than all the different water currents? No. But where is their origin? Find me the origin of wind. They're a cycle. Well, it's a cycle, but find me the origin of wind. You can explain the mechanics to me. I know there is no origin. It's all one. Okay. Yeah. But he connects lightning with what goes on with rain. But traditionally, what? God's pearl lightning from mountains, or something similar. Uh, not just having to rain, but you know, Zeus decided to hit us with lightning today while it was raining. I said it was God made really? strikes. Okay. <laughs> you know? uh, the water cycle, and this alludes to it here in Jeremiah, but Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 1 7 and Job 36 talk about the water cycle. Um, this next one, Acts 17 26. For of one blood he made all nations of the earth. You know, back in the day, what? You know, people, well, I make sure I don't get any of that Negro blood. Really? You think there's. So what? You think there's a difference between Chinese blood and American blood? And, I mean, there's only a certain number of blood types. You got A, B, and O. But you have people that honestly believe, if I get the wrong kind of blood, there's one blood, all nations, one blood. And some of the different stupid things that people came up with for the origin of races. And then we'll, we'll go through the last one uh, next week and then we'll move into some fulfilled prophecy. Close that. There you go. We'll close that right there. sisters. Most of her older sisters were more close to the age of her mother. 
and she's already lost a couple and then losing this one. So if you just keep the Cohen family uh, in your prayers, I appreciate it. Um, Brother Greg, uh, his white blood cell count continues to come down. Uh, what? 12 5. So we're, we're basically at 50% of what we were two nights ago. So we're on. We're on the right direction there with, with the white blood cell count coming down. Uh, they uh, got him back onto some Lasix today to get the excess fluid back off. And uh, so so he's been uh, having that. And uh, overall, his, his spirits were, were decent. Uh, but continue to keep him in prayer. Lord willing, he'll be able to come home tomorrow. Uh, that's, that's tentatively the plan. Uh, Sister Judy Dukes did come home. Uh, she was on her way yesterday morning to get her port out. So uh, continue to give thanks and continue to uh, ask petitions for continued healing there. But give thanks for all the healing she's had already. Uh, what else do we need to be mindful of prayer-wise or announcement wise Alvin and Betty. Alvin and Betty. It's, uh, yes, Alvin is really struggling with Betty's condition. So, uh, um, I want to thank everybody for prayers for my family, my mother. Yes, sir. Um, with her neck injury. Um, she's stable and all, and they're not talking about how to do surgery and all. So okay. she's doing well. Thank you all. Uh, Sister Shirley had, and I can't remember the correct name for it right now. Basically, they did another reset, and that they're going to hold and see how that goes. Uh, what? Reduction, that's it. They did another reduction, and they got her bound back up again, so continue to keep to surely in prayer. Uh, what else do we have? The youth and our Boy Scout troop are doing the back parking lot this Saturday. Um, painting for that. So, wear old clothes, please. Yes, wear old clothes. Uh, we're starting at 9 a.m. 9 o'clock, putting some lines on the back parking lot, the youth and the scouts on Saturday, weather permitting. Weather permitting, yes, sir. Weather permitting. You always have to say weather permitting in Florida. You're not wrong. Because it doesn't matter. Nope. <laughs> like in Texas, every time they lied, they said there's a 1% chance of rain today. Well, you liars. You're in that 1%. There is no chance of rain for the next 100 days. It's just the opposite in Florida. There's a 100% chance it won't rain today. Liars. liars. It's Florida. It can rain any day. So uh, in Texas, it can drought for forever, and in Florida, it can rain whenever. So, uh, so weather permitting. What else do we have? When someone says, why, not, why are we studying these things? They say, brother, we, we believe in Jesus. We believe in the Bible. <clears throat> As we move through these, there's different things that will register with you for why the Bible is reliable. For me, the textual evidence, that was never a huge deal to me. Um, you know, that, that was never my biggest point. For me, it was just the overall history of how we got the Bible in English. But for me, what we looked at tonight, that was always a big one, and what we'll look at with fulfilled prophecy. If you ask Catherine the number of times that I've gone to the horse tracks or the casinos in our marriage, how many is it? Maybe a hundred? No, she's holding up zero. <laughs> you know why? I don't gamble. Not that I don't like the idea, right? The super lot of $9.87236 billion. I ain't spending 50 cents. But what if you win? I ain't spending 50 cents. Why? Because I've got a better chance of winning that lottery than uh, any of the claims of evolution being true. 
when I get these things, I'm a numbers guy. I like odds. I like all the odds stacked as much in my favor as I can get. I don't know about anybody else. Why? Because it does come down to this. And I need you to understand this, children. The Bible, the stuff you saw tonight in the Bible, these things were true thousands of years before science was able to prove it for science and skeptics. Yes. And once it was proved true, you know how many skeptics believed what the Bible had already said? Yeah. Basically zero. Them proving that what the Bible said was always true doesn't prove that the Bible is true. It just proves that man should have gone on God's page a long time ago. That's what it proves. But God said it. The Bible had it right. They say, oh, it's just a coincidence. Uh-huh. Just like your car in the driveway, it's just a coincidence that it all came together in all those pieces, right? The internal claims of the Bible are verifiable externally by science. You need to understand this other truth that that gives me. Nothing God asks of me requires, quote, blind faith. He's given me thousands of truths that I can verify that when I take my step, I know I'm going to be on solid ground yes. because I have Amen. hundreds of things in the past that I know he's been right about. Amen. And I can stake everything. So when we sing this song, Victory in Jesus, I heard an old, old story about a Savior came from glory. This is the way it is. But you know, that old story is just as true now as when it happens. When we look at the fulfilled prophecy, and I'll, I'll tell it to you now because most of you won't remember the exact details of it when we do our fulfilled prophecy, the statistical odds of eight prophecies relating to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus coming to pass the way they did is 1 in 10 to the 58th power. Now here's what that looks like if you don't visualize the numbers like that in your head. I take one silver dollar and I put a black X on it. I drop it somewhere in the state of Texas and then I bury the state of Texas two foot deep in silver dollars from border to border, top to bottom. And then I shake and mix it up. And then I blindfold you on the Texas line in East Texas at Texarkana. And I tell you, commence to walk it. And the first place you stop and that you reach down and pick up that one silver dollar. Mathematically, you have a greater chance of that happening than of eight prophecies coming to pass. You know, with those kind of odds, and we'll look at about probably 40 different fulfilled prophecies. We could look at well over 100, but we'll look at about 30 or 40 with those kind of odds. You know what? A God who can make that stuff happen when he spreads those prophecies out over thousands of years and brings it all to pass in 24 hours, just like he said. That's the only place that you can put your faith. That's the only place you can put your trust. Man couldn't even get right to put in a simple, you know, latrine trench for thousands of years. But we now say we're going to trust man. 